Um, we're coming this one with, today, with uh, this week's Sunday School lesson. And the title is Seeking Wisdom for, for the Future. And it's coming from uh, 2 Kings 22nd chapter, verses 14 through 20. And the unifying topic is called the Prophet of Wisdom. So let's pray. Uh, let's pray for a second. Heavenly Father, we come this morning and we thank you for another day. We thank you for the opportunity to be able to share your word once again. We pray and ask that you would just give us all receptive hearts, oh God, that as we share your word, that we may be able to retain it and be able to use it to stand on and apply it to our everyday walks of life. We thank you for everyone that's here this morning on Zoom and that are participating and those who will see it later. We just thank you, O oh God, for being such a good father and a good God. And we thank you for your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay. So this morning, as I said, our word is coming from uh, the 22nd chapter of 2 Kings, verses 14 through 20. Uh, before we start, I'd like to just give a little background before we get to what's happening in the first part of this chapter. This is um, this lesson is talking about Josiah, King Josiah. And at the beginning of the lesson, it's talking about how he first began to reign. He was very young. He was eight years old when he began to reign. And um, he reigned for 31 years in Jerusalem. And it talks about how he did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord. And he also walked in all the ways of his father, David, uh, not turning aside to the right or to the left. And we know, if we've said it a look back, we know that the uh, kings, that they were not always good kings. As a matter of fact, we had more evil kings than we did good kings. And um, he was the great grand grandson of Hezekiah, who was another king who walked in the side in, in, in walked with the Lord and walked right and did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. But then he had a father and a grandfather. His father was Amnon. And his grandfather was, was Manasseh. And they were very evil kings, especially his grandfather Manasseh. They did all kinds of things that were not pleasing to the Lord. It talks about how they would sacrifice uh, their own sons, how they practiced sorcery and divination, and how they consulted mediums and, and spiritists. And they did so much to lead the people of Judah away from the Lord and to put and to give and to do evil like a lot of other nations did. They would worship idol gods and they began to make images of idol gods and did all kinds of things that were not pleasing to the Lord. And Josiah, who was just eight years old when he started reigning, said he did right uh, in the eyes of the Lord. And it was just so wonderful to know that someone that young had the mind to be able to follow God and to want to do that which was right. And you have to have a desire in your heart to do that which is right. And then you will start seeking to do what you know is pleasing to God. So um, it said that in the 18th year of his reign that he sent for the secretary to find and uh, to come to the temple. He told he wanted him to go up to uh, see Hilkiah, who was a high priest, and told him to get things ready. He wanted him to get the money together because they had been saving money all this time. They had been collecting every time someone comes to the temple. They had doorkeepers that collected money, and um, they had men that appoint that were appointed to supervise the work of the temple. So they had been saving money, but nothing had been done on the temple, and that was one thing that was that was really a negative thing. No one had the temple had been laying, and it had not been upkept. It had not been um, restored. It had not been. It was still in a kind of dilapidated situation. But where it had been torn down and where people had come in and enemies had come in and taken over before and robbed and tore up the place. So they had not kept the temple as it should have been kept. 
and it was in very bad need of repair. And so decided, decided we're going to take the money that we've been collecting, and we're going to go ahead and get God's house back in order. And he sent his secretary to go and tell them to go ahead and appoint the people to uh, supervise the work on the temple. They had workers who would repair it. They had carpenters and builders and masons and all that would repair the temple. And, the, and, and Josiah trusted them enough. He said, you don't need to have an account of the money. I entrusted to them because I know that they're acting faithfully. And that's a good thing to know that you can trust people with money that they're gonna do the right thing. And so they began to work on the temple. And while they while they were repairing and restoring the temple, Hilkiah, the high priest, talked to the secretary and said, I found the book of the law in the temple of, of the Lord. He gave it to Shaphan, who was the secretary, and he began to read the book. And uh, when he read it, he said, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna take this book up and show it to the king. What, what's in this book, the king needs to know about it. So the book that he found was the book of the law. And it had in one place it said it was the book of Deuteronomy, and another place it said it was the five books of the Bible, the first five books of Pentateuch from uh, Genesis to Deuteronomy. Or whatever it was, the word of the law. And he took the book up to the king. And um, when he got there, he told the king, he said, I want to let you know that uh, Hilkiah the priest gave this book to me. He found it while they were in there repairing. And um, I want to read it to you. So he began to read this book of the law. And as he read the book of the law, Josiah tore his robe and gave this order to, to Hilkiah the priest. And, um, and to, he gave it to Hilkiah and to, and to a, a high camp. These, these names are something else, but I've tried to uh, get the correct pronunciation on them. Who was the son of Shaphan and Akbar uh, and Asaiah. He told them, he, he, so he appointed five of them. He said, you need to go and inquire of the Lord for me, not just for me, but for my for the people and for all of Judah about what is written in this book that has been found. He's because I can see right now, great is the Lord's anger. He said his anger burns against us. And why? Because our fathers have not obeyed the words of the of this book. They have not acted in accordance with all that is written there concerning us. And this kind of brings us up to our lesson today. Um, but we know that back then, they did not have the entire book of the Bible. As a matter of fact, they were, the only ones that had been written that time was the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible. And they did not have, like now everybody have a Bible, two or three Bibles at home. And um, back then they had, they had the word written on scrolls and it was usually kept in the temple. And maybe a few other people like the prophets or the priests would have a copy of it, but they didn't have it in their homes like they like we have today. They didn't have the access of the word like that. Plus the, the book was not in, in, in its entirety like it is today. We have the whole entire book. And um they did not um they did not have um a way to, to just read the book. They would they could they had what they call phylacteries. That they would put on their foreheads with, with, with scriptures in them and on their wrists, on their left wrist, that they would use and they could pull out those scriptures and read them, but they didn't have the entire book. So they, this is how they would keep up with the scripture. And then when they would go into the temple and they would have service, of course, then the priests would always read words of the Lord. And they, this is how they were able to keep up. So, um, this, so I, you know, it, it, it tells us that. They had a, they had, I mean, so in a way, they didn't have, an, they had an excuse in a way they did. It says, I've always heard the ignorance of the law is no excuse. So these people did not have um, the entire book. So they, so they had a reason, I guess, for not really knowing. They had to, uh, they had to, uh, they, were, they did not understand the, the word as well. Judah did not understand the word as well because they did not have the full book. 
And when you don't have the word of God, then it's so hard to, to be able to, to understand and know what it all means and to be able to understand it. So that the now their wisdom was left up to just the human effort, I guess, of, of what they would do, plus the priest. And whenever they could get a hold of the word, they would read the word out loud at certain times. And this is how they, hello, am I being heard? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, okay, everything faded out, I didn't know, okay. Um, but anyway, uh, so, so it was the high priest and other leaders did not have, they did not possess enough spiritual competence uh, to guide uh, Josiah to the path that he needed to have to lead Judah. And um, so they didn't have the, have, the, have the word that way. So anyway, but Josiah had already made his mind that he was going to follow the ways of the Lord as much as he knew. So then when he heard about the, uh, this book of the law, and, and, and Shaphan read it to him, he knew something was wrong. And it says that he, he tore his robe and he tore his robe was a, uh, that he had a spirit of heaviness after he read this and after he heard what the, what the book of the Lord was saying. He became very soft, sorrowful, and he was grieved because he realized that God's people had not been, been being obedient not even the fathers before him, the kings before him, and not been being obedient as they were supposed to be. And um, and, that, and also he was able to read about the consequence of the sin that was going to happen. Not only did he read about what, what, would, what would happen, what, what God wanted them to do, how he wanted them to, to follow the law, and then they would know what to do. But if they did follow the law, there were consequences behind this. And he heard these consequences. And when he heard them, this is what made him tear his robe because he was deeply sorrowful for what had happened. And this is a way of, of showing repentance and showing that you are sorry for what for, for, for the things that you have done. And he realized that not only him, but he was responsible for all the people of the nation. And he said, we have not been doing according to the Lord. We have got to do something. And, um, and as soon as he heard the word of the Lord, he sprang up into action. And that's one thing about it. When he realized he was not going according to the words of the Lord, he decided it's time to do something. I, something has got to be done. And I don't know exactly what it all means because I he had not heard of the book. I mean, he had not read or had access to the book of the law. So he knew he needed to confront someone or consult someone who had more knowledge than he did. So this is when he told um this is when he told his high and the rest of the men that he had appointed. He said, you need to go and inquire of the Lord about what we need. And back then when they would need, they would pray, but they would also get a higher source. They would talk to a prophet or prophetess, or they would talk to um, another priest or someone who had more knowledge about the word so they could get a better understanding. And this is something that we need to do. We need to, if we don't, there's no excuse for not knowing because if you have the law, you have the word of God with you, and you don't understand. There's don't understand. There's too many things, too many resources that you can get, too many commentaries and different things that can break the word down that will show you what you need to do and would and explain it to you better so that you will know how to follow God's word uh, the way He wants us to. And then we have people that have studied and have been to school and know a lot about the word of the Lord. And we can always go to them or somebody who's a preacher, teacher, or someone that has more authority on the word of the law. They can talk to you about it and explain things and break it down. So there's always a way you can get more information. There's always a way we can get more spiritual understanding about the word of God because there's too many things to our access today which they did not have back at that time. But um, he realized that as a leader, as a king, that he had to make every effort he could to, to uh, be able to turn the people back to God and turn them back to the word. And this is another thing that leaders and others who are in charge need to, need to know uh, the difference when things are not going according to the word of God, when things are not pleasing to God, then we need to check, we need to do a, a reality check, a spirituality check. Be able to get things back on track so 
so that we can please God because there are consequences if we don't. So, um, and today the lesson starts at chapter, um, I mean, verses 14 here. And I think I kind of brought us up to, to, the, to the present time now. In verse 14, it talks about a uh, Hilkiah the priest and, and the other four men that the king had appointed. He asked them to go and speak to the prophetess, Huldah. So here it says that he asked them to go. Because I'll read this. Um, so the priest, <clears throat> Hilkiah, Ahikam, Agbor, Shaphan, and Asiah went to the prophetess Huldah, the wife of Shalom, son of Tikbar, son of Harith, people of the wardrobe. She resided <clears throat> in Jerusalem in the second quarter where they consulted her. And so this is where they went to talk to, to seek some godly advice and seek the meaning from a true prophet of the Lord. Um, and when we no, we don't know the word or we don't understand the word or we know we need to get more than there's no room for arrogance. That's what it is when we think, well, I don't know, but I'm not going to ask anybody. I'm not going to seek to find out because like I said, there's too many sources and resources for us to go to. So we need to humble ourselves and do what we need to do so that we can get a better understanding of the word of God as we need to. And um, so they went to seek hope. And um, she, her name means weasel. Her name means weasel. And I, she did not act like a weasel though, when we talk about this. She was a descendant of Rahab and she was a female who had great influence. And, um, and she, she was also married to a man of great influence. Her, her husband, her husband, Shalom, um, Shalom, a Shalom, um, was the keeper of the wardrobe, which meant that he took care of the royal, the royal uh, robes that the kings wore, and he also took care of the uh, garments that the priests wore. So he had a very important job, and they were close to the temple. As a matter of fact, their residence was close to the temple, that it was enclosed right there on the property of the temple in the second, in the second district, I think is what it said. But they were close. They were near the near the court of the palace, and they were also near to the temple. And um, she had connections with the court, and she was highly respected in Judah. And she was a teacher of the oral law as well. And she spoke as God's mouthpiece. Now there were other prophets at that time reign that were there while. Josiah was reigning. Jeremiah and Zephaniah were also prophets at that time. But Josiah asked for Huldah, and she was a prophetess, which is a woman prophet. And at that time, maybe he was more familiar with her, or maybe that was the one that God had just led him to go to and ask. So we see that she had an important role here as well. And um, so they went to her to consult her. And he wanted to be sure that he understood what God's word was saying. And he wanted to understand, what, he wanted some clarity on it. We can see and we can understand things, but a lot of times we need more clarification about what the word of God is saying. And it's our right to seek a higher source or seek someone that can, that can shed more light on the word. And uh, so this is where we're at, at chapter, I mean, we're at verse 14, where I just talked about. And now, She's Huldah is getting ready to uh, give her prophecy to them. It says that uh, 15 through 17 says, she declared to them, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, tell the man who sent to you, thus says the Lord, I will indeed bring disaster on this place and on its inhabitants. All the words of the book that the king of Judah has read, because they have abandoned me and have made offerings to other gods so that they have provoked me to anger with all the work of their hands. And therefore, my wrath will be kindled against this place and it will not be quenched. So here we see Huldah, the prophetess, giving them the word that she had, that God had given to her. And she gave this word to Judah as a whole here. When she began to prophesy, she gave exactly the Lord's word and she explained their meaning. 
she, she spoke distinctly and she spoke boldly. And she told them that um, they had not been doing what they were supposed to do. They had not been um, keeping with the word of the Lord they were supposed to, they had abandoned it. As a matter of fact, she said that they had already taken, they had already turned to other gods, those little G gods. They had not been doing what, what God had told them to do. Our, our, our almighty God told them to do. They had provoked us to aim because that's, and they had made other little deep gods with their own hands uh, out of wood and other things. And they had already broke the first two commandments because they did not. They, they, they said that should not take a, uh, another, that should not have another God before. Them. And this is what they were doing. They had built all these other gods. And they turned their backs on the true and living God and began to worship these little G gods. And then when by them making these images, and that was the second command, that should not make any graven image uh, to, uh, to me or of me. And this is what they were done. They, they had strayed so far from God and he was not pleased. And they just disregarded him. They disrespected him and his name. And, um, and so, so here, Hagar was telling them, you've done this, and this has caught, this has provoked anger in the Lord. He is not pleased with you. And even all the work that you've done, the work of your hands, and um, his wrath is kindled, which means that he was fired up. God was fired up because they had learned all the time. They were his chosen people, and he had allowed them to know and to be taught about what he wanted and what he needed as, as their God and what they need to do as his people. But Along the way, there were so many evil kings, they did not do according to God's word. They went in their own way. They did what they wanted to do. And they sought evil advice about what to do while they were running the king. They did not uh, walk in God's way. And as a matter of fact, we don't know what was going on about, about the book of the law. We don't know if it was misplaced, which it could have been all those years with the, a lot of evil kings, or whether somebody and purposely hid the book because they were evil and they didn't want to hear about the word of the law. They did not want to hear anything about God because they wanted to go in their own way. So they could have purposely packed it back somewhere and had it hidden so it couldn't be found. But thank God during that cleaning and repairing and, 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 and fixing up the place and revising it, um, Hilkiah came, came across the book of the law. And, um, and I'm sure he was glad as a priest to be able to find it too. And so they had to share this with the king. And then the king, when he heard all this stuff, he he, he was he was very, he was very upset about it. And um his heart became broken. And that's what God wants us when we know we're done, we've done wrong. He wants us to have a broken and a contrite heart and want us to be sorrowful and and, and to and to really be um and to really want to repent for what we've done that was wrong and what we've done they have not led up they have not been lined up with the way of God and um, all these other kings had walked in idolatry and all of them so many of them had done so many things and really it's, it's a wonder that Josiah he had to have heard something from somebody to be able to know what he did so somebody was giving him a word I don't know if it was a I guess a high priest and maybe other God and men that was around him, but somebody kept to teach this young king how to walk with the Lord. And he did not know fully everything, but what he did know, this is what he did. He followed what he knew, and this is all we can do until we get access to no more. And this is why we have to seek the word of God. We have to seek his face and search to be able to know of what it is that's pleasing to him. But here, Hulda is giving her prophecy about what the word of God was saying. She's explaining it more fully. And this was to hold Judah as a, as a nation when she began to prophesy. And I want to stop here because I want to give somebody a chance to, to uh, comment and give, give some uh, ideas on the lesson, if you will. Hello? I want to say on the lesson, um, Sister Teacher, I thought I thought what I found inter interesting in the study is that um, they always sought out the prophetess because they knew she had a prophetic gift. 
but they thought of her as being lower than them. And the study it talked about how she lived on a lower elevation, but yet and still, when they needed prophetic information, they would all run to her because they knew that her gift was connected to God. And, and what that reminds me of, what that tells me, it doesn't matter where you live, but what matters is who you're living for. Amen. Because she she didn't complain. She still made their wardrobes and made sure they had what they needed. And when they came to her, she gave them what they said the Lord. She didn't add Amen. any of her own personal opinions or anything. She heard from God. Okay. And she stayed in her place with God to do what God called her to do. And that's important for us to know. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Anyone else? I just want to chime in and say, you know, when they went to her, they were going because they needed godly counsel and godly wisdom. Mm -hmm. They needed godly interpretation and clarity and understanding on the things about where they were and where they were headed and what was going on. And I think the thing that we need to learn from that is, is that whenever we mm -hmm. find ourselves in need of cl clarity, we ought not just seek anybody for clarity. We ought to seek somebody that knows the voice of God and that can hear the voice of God. That even if you go to them and they don't know right at that moment um, what you know, you're talking about, what's going on, but they know how to pray and hear the voice of God and get you the proper answer or get you the proper direction um, that you need. I think a lot of times we put our trust in people, but we find out that people let us down and people will play off of our emotions. But in this moment, when they went to her, they didn't need an emotional playoff. They needed a word. They needed some clarity and clear and precise direction. And with the season that we're in, I've been telling the saints of God all year is that God is going to be intentional concerning us and by him being intentional meaning that he's going to be intentional about making sure that he speaks only to us that what he wills for us to have that he speaks mm -hmm. only what he wills for us to have and giving us that clarity because the reality is we've been seeking answers uh, long before a pandemic came about some things in our lives and god has been speaking but we've not been able to hear because we've been listening to the wrong voices and so in this moment when they go to her even though that she was, uh, I think Sister Chief just said it, is that she uh, was considered to be beneath them. It did not matter what her rank was, but what mattered was is that she was connected to the voice. And that when okay. that voice spoke, they knew that they could uh, count on that voice and take it. You know, there's a, there's a lot of preachers I listen to. I love some of the big name preachers, but there's some preachers um, and pastors who I've started listening to that nobody know who in the world they are. They ain't never heard of them. They ain't never surfaced, but their their ear is connected to the mouth of God so that when they speak, you hear God. And even here in this area, there are people who are connected to the, to the mouth of God um, so that when they're connected to the mouth of God, they can speak that what he says and you know it's him because you see results, you know it's him because you recognize his voice. So when they went to her, they went to her because they recognized the voice that was speaking inside of her. Her voice was that of the Lord, that what they heard was familiar to their spirit. So in seeking godly counsel and godly wisdom and direction, we got to make sure that we're seeking counsel from the one who we know can hear from God, the one who we know can uh, get to us the clarity and the direction we need, and make sure that when you're listening to that voice, that that's a voice that you can trust, that that anointing mm -hmm. on that life has been proven, that is proven that they will speak only what thus says the Lord, that they are not what we call one of those hit and miss prophets, where that they just hit it today, and then they get it wrong tomorrow, or they, I ain't saying they got to get it right all the time, but you don't want one of them one hit wonders. Let me put it that way. That's simple. But you want somebody that you know that if you go to them, that uh, they can agree with you in prayer and get direction and answer, and you can trust what they say. Mm -hmm. Amen. That is so true. That is so important. That is so important. And, um, and I like the fact that Josiah was willing he, you can tell he was not arrogant. So many of those kings were so arrogant that they did not want to know anything and did not want to be taught because they thought whatever they did was all right. Whether it was sin or whether it was evil, they didn't care. They just wanted to, to be right in their own eyes. But Josiah wanted to be right in the eyes of the Lord. He was, he was willing, had a willing heart, and he was eager to learn of what to do 
to help to, to rule and lead his people in a better way that will be pleasing to the Lord. And so, and we'll call her here, like we said, she was a true prophet and woman of the Lord. And she was not concerned about what they thought about what she said because she knew what she spoke. She spoke from God's point of view. She spoke what he told her to speak, what he told her to say. It was not her own words. And when you do that, then you got, you got support. You don't have to worry about uh, what you say falling back or, or um, looking bad or, or, or somebody not believing or saying a ridicule about it. Because if you speak what God tells you to speak and not your own word, then you know that you're in line with his will. And so as she began to do her prophecy, she first prophesied to the nation and told them what was going to happen to them. And uh, then she prophesied to the king himself. Because as she went on, she, the first part was for the nation. Then the second part, she says in verse 18, but as for the king of Judah, who sent you to inquire of the Lord, this is Josiah, she's saying. This is what the Lord has to say. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, regarding the words that you have heard, because your heart was penitent and you humbled yourself before the Lord. When you heard how I spoke against this place, and against its inhabitants, that they should become a desolation and a curse. And because you have torn your clothes and wept before me, I, I also have heard you, says the Lord. Therefore, I will gather you to your ancestors, and you shall be gathered to your grave in peace. Your eyes shall not see all the disasters that I will bring on this place. They took this message back to the king. And so this is Huldah. First, she had the news she had for, for the whole nation as a, as a whole was not good. It was a judgment. And a lot of our actions will be, there is consequence behind our actions and there's always gonna be consequence for sin. And she told them in uh, no uncertain way about what was gonna happen. And um, she told them and she did not apologize apologize for what God had given her to say. She was one of those prophets that told it like it was. She spoke distinctly and she spoke boldly and she gave those words to them and told them what was going to happen to them. And then she told Josiah because when he, he was already had a heart to do the right thing before they'd ever found the book of the Lord. He was already doing what was right in the eyes of the Lord as far as he knew. In his youth and what he knew, he was doing right in the sight of God. He was living what he knew, but he knew there was more. And then when he found out there was more, because he had already started repair, he took initiative to start repairing the temple even before the book was found. He was determined that, um, that even though he didn't know everything, um, that he was gonna do the best that he could from what he already knew. And then when he heard about the book of the law and they opened up and began to read it, and uh, found out all this other stuff that God had been telling them and God had, God required the things that God required of them and the consequences that would happen if they didn't do it. Boy, he really, I mean, it shook him up because he was one that was willing to do what the Lord wanted to be done. He was willing to do this. And so this is what uh, Hulk is telling, telling them to go back and tell King Josiah, because you were willing to humble yourself, you repented. You were so sorry that you wept. I mean, he shed tears over the thing when he found out they had not they had been sinning and doing things that were so contrary to the word of God. When, and his heart, he, and, and Hulk says, because your heart was tender and it was sensitive when you heard the word of the Lord, um, judgment is going to be deferred for your concern. It's going to be delayed, but it's still coming. And when God says something, and when he, when he declares a word, it's coming. But because of King Josiah, who he was, God, uh, he spared them. He said, he told them, he said, you're going to be spared from this judgment uh, altogether, Josiah. He said, and the people at the present time, because you acted on their behalf when you heard about the word of the law, when you heard about the word of the law, it had been lost. You, uh, you're going to, because of what you have done, he said, your judgment is going to be deferred. In other words, it was saying that, she was telling them, she said, because of what your king did, because he had a kind heart, a repentant heart, 
because he was sorry for what had happened. And then he sprang into action and began to see what he needed to do to get things right. And this is why he was consulting uh, Hubbard. He wanted to know, well, what do we need to do? Uh, how can we get the same right? How can we rectify this? What can we do to get back in, the, back in line with God and, and, and get back in, you know, to doing what we need to be doing as a nation and as a people of God? And they knew that you know, God had chosen them specifically. And they knew they had made a covenant with the Lord. They had broke this covenant and they had done things their own way instead of doing what God had said. So here God is saying, um, he said, because of your king, because of who he is, because of what he's done, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to defer this judgment. It's going to happen, but it's going to be deferred because your king went on your behalf. He, he came he acted uh, before, you know, acted on your behalf about what he needed to do. And he took action. You can tell he was somebody that was really concerned about pleasing the Lord. And this was a good thing. We all, if we were calling ourselves Christian, we ought to be about our father's business. We need to be knowing what pleases the Lord and then doing it. A lot of times we don't always know. We get sidetracked sometimes. Sometimes we just get out of the way of the Lord. And we need to realize that when we learn better, and we know better, then we have to do better. And this is what it was saying here. When he found out what was going on, he knew he had to do better. And um, he wanted he, he want to, and he wanted all the nations to turn away from their, from their wicked ways. And it reminded me so much of, of uh, uh, Chronicles, Second, Second Chronicles uh, 7, 14, about turning away. But if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, and then you have to get humble when you go before the Lord. You can't go up there with an arrogant heart and thinking, well, I ain't did nothing, but I'm going to, and then, and Josiah didn't blame the other people. He said something, he used the word us. We have not done, we did not do like we we're supposed to do. Our fathers didn't do it. I mean, they didn't teach us, they didn't show us, but we didn't do it because a lot of the things they did not know. And because, because you don't know, you have, you have to know if you're following God, there is a certain thing that he requires of us. And we have to speak and search for that, for that word that God, that God wants us to have so we can get a clearer understanding so that we can know how to please him in this respect. And um, seeking God's advice, and like Pastor was saying earlier, I'll just speak with someone else that can know more about it. This is what you need to do when you don't always know. Our actions and our words show what's in our heart. And this is what we need to do so we can be able to get more clarification on what God wants us to do. And um, Huldah did exactly that. She spoke the word of the Lord and she spoke and told them from God's standpoint what he, what he was saying and she explained the word of God so they could all understand what she was saying. And um, so, and, and I like to think that God, God, he is, we know it already, he is so patient. He is so long suffering. And um, even in his judgment, he, 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 ten he tenders this with mercy because he could have went ahead and just did them in right then when they found out you've done wrong and now you're going to be punished. But it was on the cost of Josiah and his actions. This is why God spared them for the time being. This is why he delayed his judgment because of the actions of the leader of the people. And when the leader of the people has a heart to do right and does it and then tries to encourage his people to do what says the Lord, then you know that God will be pleased with this. And this, this speaks volume. This goes a long way too, because if you're leading the people, then you have to know what is right so that you can teach them and try to get everybody else back in line to do what says the Lord. And um, so, this, so they were able to get a clear understanding so Hulda gave her a prophecy and um, it said she had watched for a long time uh, how, how the people of Judah were, be, were refusing to obey God and, to, and, to, and not be obedient to him. And um, she did have this privilege of being the prophetess. And, and like I said, there was also Jeremiah and Zephaniah, but she was the one at this time. And, and this is one who the king trusted. They had, they had, heard her before, had dealings with her before, and he and she was very, and it's very important when you are carrying God's word or interpreting God's word or uh, bringing a uh, 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 prophecy to somebody, you could be someone that can be trusted. Because if you're not, then that, it's, it's like you're not getting, you're getting false prophecy. 
if it's not someone that you know you can trust the, with God's word that they're going to give it to the way it should be given. So anyone else have anything to say? I want to make note too where uh, how when uh, the king, when King Josiah, when he repented, he didn't just repent for himself, but he repented right. for on behalf of the people. And that's, that's what, you right. know, with him, with him being a good leader, um, he made sure that first, God, I'm going to repent for my part that I played, but I also mm -hmm. want to repent for these people um, that I lead who may not recognize um, that they need to come to a place of repentance. And I, I believe in this season, um, and I keep saying this, is that it's all about connection. You got to be connected to the right people because some mm -hmm. folk are being spared things because of their being connected to you. This is why you ain't got time to be picking and choosing who you're going to like, who you're going to dislike, because the very mm -hmm. one that you might not mm -hmm. like might be the one that you need to like because that's the one that is praying on your behalf and repenting on your behalf and agreeing on your behalf that God's will will be done in your life. So what they felt in this moment, God took, uh, used the prophets to tell uh, the king that look here, God done seen your tears. He done heard your repentance. And because of your repentance, because of your humility of crying out and turning away, God said, look here, I'm going to defer it. I'm going to spare you. It's not going to happen under your tenure, but it's going to happen because I'm a man of my word. But because you repented, I'm not going to let it happen now. And this is why we got to be careful. Because sometimes the very one that we're connected to, that we despise, that we're hating on, that we're trying to kill them and stab them behind the back, is the very one that's our lifeline. That's our life support. They're keeping us alive. I'm sure that there were people in the camp that did not like the king, but they dare not say it out of their mouths because of the consequences that would have come. But what they fail to realize is the that is who's keeping them alive. He went before the Lord. He cried. He repented. And God heard it. And so this is shows you that God has the ability to change his mind uh, whenever he gets ready. Because in one minute, she's prophesying and saying, look here, this is what's getting ready to happen. Mm -hmm. Then she gets the king and said, now, this is what the Lord told me to tell you. But I had to tell the people that, hey, the disaster's coming. But because you prayed, the Lord told me to tell you. Now, you go tell the people that he's going to spare. Mm -hmm. He's going to keep y'all. He's mm -hmm. not going to allow it to happen in this moment in time. And so this is why you got to be connected to the right covering, the right leader, um, and being in the right mm -hmm. place at the right time. Because, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, a lot of times we look at, um, for instance, pastors, and I'm not saying this because I'm a pastor, but we as pastors, we pray, we cover the people. And a lot of things that the people are spared from, because sometimes folk don't know what to pray or how to pray. And then some folks so caught up in doing what they're doing that they don't even take the moment to even repent and pray for themselves. But when you have a leader who is after God's own heart, which is what the Bible mm -hmm. said he would do, is that he would give us pastors after his own heart. They cover you, they pray for you, and they repent for you. They repent for things that they ain't even done they ain't even done it but they're repenting um in that in that spot just the same as jesus he he died and paid a price for something he didn't even do so that we could be spared that disaster so we could be spared uh the penalty of sin and so um, i would just encourage us to make sure we're checking our connections making sure that we're connected to the right one um because there's going to be moments when you're going to be caught up in life because life happens to all of us everybody on the zoom all nine of us and uh all of whoever's watching on facebook Life happens to all of us. And when life mm -hmm. happens to us, sometimes life hits us in such a way that we don't even know what to pray. And sometimes we don't even think to pray. We don't want to pray. We want to be stuck in that place. But when you are connected to the right connection, they pick you up in the spirit and they pray and they repent in their prayer life and it covers you and it keeps you and it allows God to spare you one more day and one more moment. You know, there's a lot of things that I've done, but I thank God mm -hmm. for the connection of the covering, for the connection of the pastor that I have, because mm -hmm. I know that when I can't pray for myself, that he's praying. Am I there to see him pray? No, but I know that he's, I trust his lips. I trust his heart. I trust his connection to the father. And because I trust that, I know that when I can't pray for myself, that he's praying for me. And that's all King Josiah did. But King Josiah, mm -hmm. he knew there was something else happening, even though he's repenting. That's why he went to the prophet said all right woman of god i need a word that's right i need clarity 
Because guess what? I ain't worried about all this. I don't want nothing material. I want clarity. And I think that that's what we got to be like the king is that God in this season, I can care less about the material stuff. Because you said if I seek your kingdom and your righteousness, everything will be added. But what I need now, I need direction. I need clarity. Where we go? Because what my prayer has been now that I'm starting to see, okay, hey, they got vaccines and all this and that. And I see, you know, governors acting a fool. So my prayer is like, God, I ain't even trying to figure out if you're going to end this pandemic or not. My question is, God, give me clarity on what's my next move. What's the next move for the people that I'm responsible for? What is our next move? What is our next step of transition? Where do we go from here? That is what our prayer have to be. And then also in that prayer, it's okay, God. And even while I'm praying for transition for the corporate body, but I want you to search each and every individual and help them to make a personal transition. And that's all that's all the king was doing was like, OK, there's some stuff I'm praying, but I need clarity because I need to know which way I need to move, because as I move, I want the people to follow. But I can't move if I don't know where I'm going. So guess what? Woman of God, I need clarity. God is speaking, but I want to make sure I'm hearing him. And sometimes it ain't that we don't understand what he's saying. It's just the fact that we want to make sure that we hearing God clearly so we don't disappoint him. And so we don't disappoint those who are connected to us. And so this morning, I just want to encourage us to make sure that we are know that we know that we're connected with the right one. And even if it's for a season, God, make sure that whatever season I'm in right now, that I'm connected to the right voice, that when uh, I, when that voice speaks, I know it's you. That I want to be connected to that voice. I want to be connected to that source that's connected to you because the reality is I'm human. You're human. We all have weak moments. But God, when I have that weak moment, I want to be able to go to the voice that I can trust that has their ear to your mouth so that when you speak, even if it ain't what I want to hear, speak it because when you speak it, I'll know it's you because I'm sure that when she started speaking, just Josiah, he heard the good and the bad. He heard what she said to the entire nation. And he heard what she said to him, but I'm sure he didn't want to hear what she said to the entire nation. He didn't want to hear that, but it gave him a, a reassurance when she came back and said, now to you, King, the Lord says X, Y, and Z. It gave him great assurance and great comfort in knowing that hey, his labor and his repentance and his time in the face of God was not in vain because God was hearing him. And because God was hearing him, he was going to in return bless the people. We as leaders, not just as pastor, but everybody that's a leader, we do what we do because we want the best interest of the people. We want God to in return bless the people. If that ain't what you want, then you're doing the wrong. You ain't in it for real. But your mindset is, God, I want you to give me what I need for the best interest of the people. Because guess what? It's not about me. It's all about uh, them. All right? That's all yes, I had to say. Amen. That, that's what, yeah, that was so good, Pastor. Appreciate that. They were saying, and, that, and that's how school lesson says, when leaders are able to lead in truth and competence, then the people will flourish. And when leaders are foolish and incompetent and want to go in their own way and not the ways of God, then the people will suffer. And um, and I like it because when Josiah found this out, he got all this together, he heard about this, he got he went and got the people. He called all the people together. He started reading the book of the of the law, the covenant to all of them, reminding them what God had said and telling them how important it was for them to be obedient. And the obedience of one leader saved many from the wrath of God. And, um, and he went on talking to him as a leader. And I like it because when he found out that they were not doing according to the word of the Lord, he didn't linger around and sit back and say, well, let me see what will let me say. He sprang into action immediately. He got up from there and he corrected that course of action. He corrected the course that they were going in and, and, and went the way that he knew that it was pleasing to God. And it was saying that life is not about where we begin, but it's where we end. And, and I like that, and, it's that, and this last part I'm going to say here is that uh, we need to realize uh, by learning the word of God and the wisdom of God is an ongoing process. We're never going to know all that we need to know, but we need to continue to search and seek for the wisdom of God. Seek it, and we can find it in his word and find it in resources that will help us. And every sin has a consequence. When we sin, we need to be quick to repent. And, and plan to never do that again. So many times people repent of something, they go back to the same thing over and over again. But we need to repent and we're not uh, supposed to go back and keep doing that again. And I heard Pastor say that why we're the same sin all the time. 
If you don't need to be sinning, period, but let it be a different sin. If you got to do one, you're going to repent and then you go back and do it. It's like it, 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 it just takes away the whole process of it. And like Josiah, when you hear the word, respond accordingly. If you're obedient, then you can rejoice and you can keep on obeying. If you've been sinful, then you need to repent and turn from it and turn back to God and his way. And we need to seek godly wisdom and advice so we can get the clarity of God's word. We need to always stay humble because it was the humility of King Josiah that brought about the mercy and the grace for a whole nation. True prophets, their word will come to pass. What Hogan prophesied about, and we learned that in a few lessons back about true prophets and the qualifications of them, their word will come to pass. And God's wisdom always line up with God's word. So we had a king, Josiah, the priest, Hilkiah, and the prophetess Hogan. They all worked together, leading the people righteously, teaching, preaching, the word of God that came from uh, the priest and leading the people from the king and then interceding on behalf of God and being the people's mouthpiece. That was the prophetess. They all worked together to bring about uh, God's will. And this was a good lesson. There was a lot in it. And I thank God for it because this helps us to know how to be more obedient to God's word. It helps us to know how to speak and search for what we need to so that we can be pleased unto God. You don't call you, you don't want to call yourself a Christian and then be doing stuff that ain't even Christ's life. You want to follow his word. If you're not doing or you don't understand the word of God, then you seek and you search. And when you know better, then you need to do better. That's what it's saying here. When Josiah found out he was not doing what he was supposed to do, he found out the correct way to do when he knew better, he did better. And this is what we're supposed to do because we're going to be responsible for our actions. When we know better, we better do better. We need to turn away from those wicked ways and be willing to do it God's way. So I, I know I'm kind of about up, but I thank God for this. And I thank God for your input. Does anybody else have anything they want to add to this? I think our time is up and I appreciate your input. I appreciate your uh, being here. On, on with the lessons you shared with us today. Pastor, did you have anything else you want to say? Okay. Well, if nobody else has anything to say, I would like for um, I would like to say again, thank you for for being here for the support and for the prayers. And um, I, I can't see anybody but Pastor, so I don't know. I to, I would like to ask for volunteer to close us out, please. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for the teacher, God. We thank you for all of those that joined in to learn more of you, God, so we can be more like you. We pray that your word will be heard abroad, Lord, so that people can repent and be more like you, Father God. We thank you for our church family and all those that are involved in this Sunday school lesson this morning, Lord. Continue to have your way through us, Lord, and in our lives, and we will let your perfect will be done. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 God bless y'all. See some of y'all tomorrow. God bless you.